Hi, I'm Jim from Left Wing Libertarian. And I'm Anna from BeautyGirlsMom.com. We're coming to you today from sunny... Sunny Florida. Beautiful Disney Saratoga Springs Resort and Spa. Where if you're a DVC member, you get to hear those wonderful words every time you come here. Welcome Welcome home. home. So, where did we go for dinner today, Anna? Today we went to Chef Art Smith's Homecoming Florida Kitchen. That's a new restaurant at Disney Springs? Down at Disney Springs. You can just call it Homecoming. That's what everybody else seems to be doing. So what was the thing that we went there to go try? All the things. All the um, things. We really went because <clears throat> the menu from what I had seen looked really, really good. Everything on there it just screamed housewarming, homecoming, just like a family get together kind of a menu so grits fried chicken okra grits and fried chicken there was no okra there were greens um deviled eggs uh fish dip what are some of the other things what kind had? of deviled eggs they were called church lady deviled eggs and different from the way i've usually done them at home you know yeah, yeah. i usually cut the whole egg in half lengthwise lengthwise i scoop out the insides and then i have two halves of the egg this one was actually kind of shaved just off the, like the, top. Yeah, the top of it was shaved off. So it was a whole egg filled with a deviled egg filling. And they gave them to you standing up in like... Um, a little ceramic egg carton. Super, super cute. Topped with a couple... Greens. Cr- uh, crumbled bacon. Oh, yeah, bacon. Greens but underneath bottom. it was... Well, not like mixed greens, but like lettuce or something. Yeah, just just decoration. Yeah, very tasty. And we have a vegetarian in our party, so they... They, they left the bacon off of two of the eggs. Two you of get them. six of them for each entree, so it's a good... Or appetizer, I'm sorry. So it's a good appetizer to share. We have a vegetarian in our party. They did leave the bacon topping off of the top of two of the eggs so that she could enjoy them. And so then that our was the first appetizer. First appetizer. Our second appetizer our was... Our second appetizer was the, the Jasper board. Um, The Jasper board is basically a charcuterie, which is very popular at restaurants anymore. It basically meats and cheeses. So this came with like a like a two by two cube with this little wooden spoon to dip out the cheese. Of a house made pimento cheese, which was creamy, really good cheese. And then it came with a bunch of these uh, like flatbread kind of wafery things. Very tasty. Yep. They also baked in house the crackers. And then there was a thinly 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 shaved ham that was delicious bread and butter pickles and which were tasting like a summer sausage kind of a thing yeah that was that was (coughs) maybe one of my favorite appetizers but i love a charcuterie i just so our our vegetarian just went cheese bread and pickles occasionally yes um and then for everybody else you just go down the line and you kind of you build your own Build your own, put what you want on it. I was taking my cracker and putting a little of the pimento cheese on the bottom, tiny bit of the shaved ham, and then the pickle on top. It was, it was delicious. I, I could have, I could have just eaten that. That would have been, I would have been perfectly happy just eating that, but I didn't. So appetizer three. Appetizer three was the jalapeno hush puppies. Well, they were hush puppies, but the sauce was a cranberry jalapeno blend. No, it wasn't at all. Wasn't it? No. I have to Google that, but it's not its not cranberry, and there's not jalapeno in it, I don't think. Well, there was like a red sauce in a little cup. It was a jelly. A je- Was a jelly? Was it like a cranberry jelly? Not a cranberry jelly. How long has it been since we've been there? <laughs> like an hour? Ten minutes. <laughs> so you might be wondering how many people were in our party. But see, this was, this was the point at which you spilled soda all over the table. Yeah, there was a thing. Yeah, well, our drinks were, and by the way, if you like tea, they have unsweetened tea and not just iced tea, but sweet tea. The sweet tea was delicious. Um, and then, of course, the regular Disney, uh, you know, Coca-Cola products, the Coke, Diet Coke, the um, Sierra Mist. Okay, I take it back because you, you're right on the jalapeno. <laughs> it was a house-made, house-made pimento. Beauty Girls live moment. You're here to see it. House-made pimento cheese hush puppy served with a red jalapeno jelly. They were really good. So really good. But I only got one. Here's what I did with the sauce. I... Oh had it on my plate and used it for the next appetizer also was that tasty yes you did okay so after the hush puppies the appetizer was after the hush puppies we had the fish dip the fish dip and the fish dip because now that i've looked this up uh anna maria fish dip an iconic florida favorite smoked in-house and served with buttermilk crackers 
The waiter called it a mullet fish. Yeah, that was like the fish of the day. So they're making it out of fish the fish of the, of the day. Fish of the day was grouper. Yeah. But this was a mullet fish, and it was a little fishy for me. But it was very creamy. Um, I, I don't even know. It just it just had a fishy taste to me, and it was cold. I think when when I when I saw it on the menu, I thought it would be like a warm. You know when you get like a warm crab dip kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. This was not like a warm crab dip. This was more like a cold bagel smear. Yeah, that's what it was. But although was Anna did not like it, I thought it was okay. But when I had mixed it in with the cranberry jalapeno or habanero relish, way tastier. Way tasty. The Jasper board, by the way, also had candied pecans. I only got one of those two. What happened to all the pecans? Our Where vegetarian ate them all. Our vegetarian ate yeah. them. Yeah. They were very good, too. <laughs> Matter of fact, as soon as the board came, she was like, these didn't touch the meat and moved them to the side and started eating them. So our plan was originally to just go with appetizers, but there were four of us eating the appetizers. So even though we had multiple appetizers... Oh, we got another appetizer. We did? Well, we got the mac and cheese. Or is that not an appetizer? So, no, that's a side. That's a side. Um, and let me just... I think it's just called Mom's Mac and Cheese. Very hearty, very sticky. Um, it's not craft Mama's, noodles. It's the, the round spiral. Mama's Mac and Cheese. It was a white, like a bechamel cream sauce for the macaroni. The macaroni was like the curly ones. Yeah, I don't like know what the they're called. It wasn't just a regular something. elbow. It was a curly macaroni. Um, but the whole top of it was crusty, crispy, crusty. Like they made it, then put it in a crock and like flam flambéed the top of it with this little bit of crispiness. Yeah, and it wasn't just, you know, some do like a topping of breadcrumbs or something. This was like a whole crust across the top. That was really tasty. Um, to tell you how thick this was, at one point um, our vegetarian actually cut it with a knife into wedges. Um, to get it out to actually scoop along the side to get all the cheese and stuff. Underneath that was really creamy, yep. liquidy, you know, kind of very sauce tasty. on the bottom. That was very tasty. <clears throat> At that point, not even because we were hungry, but because, I don't know when I'm coming back again with this big wedding coming up. So I wanted to at least try the fried chicken. And then because we did have a vegetarian with us, I want to say there were not a lot of vegetarian options on the regular menu. I'm sure we could have asked for things specific to a vegetarian diet. Okay, but like the church lady deviled eggs. I mean, it was no problem for them to take the meat off it, off of it. It wasn't. Because it was a bacon crumble or something and on our, top. And our vegetarian eats fish, so technically she's a pescatarian. But if you didn't eat fish and you didn't eat meat, there was very little on the actual menu that you could eat. Well, I guess, and then it gets back to the mac and cheese or... And I also want to point out, because I just had this conversation with my friend Dory on Facebook, Dory eats gluten-free. Again, we don't eat gluten-free, so I didn't, I didn't think to ask... I eat gluten-free sometimes. Cheese balls are gluten-free. I didn't think to ask what the gluten-free options were, but on the actual menu, there's a lot of bread, breading, like the jalapeno, hush puppies. The That's Southern Mom's cooking. That's what you would It expect. is. It's very homey. Fried fish, everything um, sandwich-wise comes with... But they did ask you at the front door. Huge rolls. The hostess asked bread. you, and then at the table, the waiter asked if there were any dietary if concerns. If you have any food allergies or anything like yeah. that. So they were very attentive so they, to it. So they must be able to accommodate you to an extent, or at least go over the menu options that you are you know, are, are not going to interfere with any kind of food. Which allergies. is another, in and, itself, in and of itself, a good time when you're going out to eat. You're getting food prepared to order. This isn't stuff that was made five hours ago and sitting in the chiller or anything. Right. So we did opt to get two entrees. Again, there were four of us. We opted to get the fried chicken and donuts and the... You know, because fried chicken's not bad enough. You need to throw in a donut. Have a donut. <laughs> um, now, were these round we donuts? Have? Hostess donuts? What were they? Hush puppy looking donuts? They looked like a hush puppy. They tasted like if you've ever had a Chinese donut, it was like a light breaded donut that had a sugar, like a, just a sugar coating. Like a on granulated it. sugar. It wasn't like powdered sugar, but yeah, it you was, definitely like taste it as you were. Yeah, they were really, really good. And it did was, you say they toasted the chicken with the, the sugar also? They had a brown sugar, or not a brown sugar, a powdered sugar on top of the chicken, and it was served with a little cup of warm syrup. Um, that was good to dip the chicken in, but we were really too full. We came home with a full piece of chicken. I'm not a big fried chicken person. I mean, I could take it or leave it. The chicken was very, uh, very moist. It wasn't dried out. It was very tasty. Moist. 
Uh, I mean, crispy, I would use crispy, crunchy. Just had a really nice batter on it. I would use the phrase buttery, but I've been accused of using that too much lately, so I'm not using it. Everything that right now. he eats is buttery. I think that's his word of the week. The other thing that we ordered was the shrimp and grits. We did not think about it when I ordered it, and I didn't actually look at it well enough to see that it has tasso ham in it. I just looked at right now. Uh, Eilish did take a bite of the grits, but did not eat any of the shrimp mixture in the middle. And it was a it was the shrimp in sort of like a red gravy. The shrimp, yeah, because it was the grits, and then there was like something red through it, and then there was a green spiral going through it also. Um, so whatever the flavorings were, but it was very tasty. The grits were very creamy. Um, the shrimp, did you notice that it had tails off? Yes, shrimp were tails off, yeah. which is good, especially if they're going to be in like a gravy or a sauce like that, so that you don't have to get your hands all messy. There was a spice to it. I don't know if it was, it was the tasso ham or if there was some red pepper sauce or something in the gravy, but it was a little bit spicy for me. I could have eaten another bite or two. I was already full, but I think it would have been a little bit too spicy for me to eat the whole. Speaking of spicy, the meal. other thing they have spicy on the table is they make their own hot sauce. That so was how was very that? Very spicy. I only took one little tiny dot of it on my plate. And I put the tip of my knife in it just to put it on my tongue. It is very spicy. But then I put it on my pimento cheese on my cracker, and it was not bad. The cheese kind of mellowed it out, and it was kind of tasty that way. So there are spicy things and side dishes. Blend them in with the other things on the table. Yeah, because uh, there's, there's <coughs> a good blend of spicy and sweet. From different dishes that really just... Kind of like home cooking, you know, something's left over from one meal and it's on your plate and it gets mixed in with the next. So then at that point... Or just a really good chef with balanced menu. Items. Yeah, has a whole, the whole menu leftovers. goes together. Yeah, it was just leftovers he threw yeah, together. Yeah. yeah, well, isn't that how they invented cop mm -hmm. salad? It was just leftovers. That just together. leftovers. So I wanted to try the Shine Cake, which is an adult, recommended for adults only. It is made with moonshine. And I also wanted to try the Hummingbird Cake. I couldn't eat either of them there. So I figured we would take dessert home with us. And because, again, I wanted the children to be able to eat it as well, I opted for the hummingbird cake. My husband insisted that they bring the hummingbird cake to the table. Yeah, so Anna could take a picture instead and. Of boxing it for us to bring home. Yeah, we'll just take one bite and then box it and bring it back to the DVC room. We do not have any hummingbird cake to show you here. Something today. happened to it. Something happened to it. It wasn't. Or for something. I did take a bite of it before everybody else dug in and devoured it. I would say that the texture most reminded me of a carrot cake. Isla said it first that she thought it it was very carrot cake-like in texture. I didn't taste a lot of the banana. I tasted mostly the cream cheese and the frosting. It was a thick cream cheese frosting. I was so full by that time I had one bite and it was okay. I, I don't Four know. Four of us ate this one piece as our dessert. Uh, like a two layer, but two very thick layers with the cream cheese frosting in between it and all the way around the top uh, and a very thick coating of the frosting. Then on the side is a scoop of a very delicious vanilla ice cream. That was really good. I took a little taste of the ice cream. That was really good. And then there was like a raspberry sauce or something drizzled around the plate. The plates are all presented really pretty. Um, and we asked our waiter when we got there, is the, do you mind if we order a bunch of appetizers? We really want to try all of these, and we've heard recommendations. And the waiter said, not a problem. And I said, do you mind putting them in in sequence? And he was like, no, I'd be doing that anyway. And he just very casually, what, were you there, an hour and a half, a little over? Yeah, we, we were there almost two hours. Yeah. But it was a very nice meal. I want to say that the restaurant, I thought it was really pretty. It's just open and airy and it's it's very rustic but if you haven't been to in disney springs in the last six months very different place it's very different from six months or a year ago and it's very different from the downtown disney pleasure island era yeah it's but even from when we were here at christmas there's so much new and so much open finished. if you have a trip coming up and you haven't been in a while put put aside at least one entire day just to browse everything I've heard a lot of people make comments about it's really just a high-end shopping mall. There's a lot of stores that you will find, the Jersey malls, even the malls down <laughs> here. If I, hold fun. on a second. Just to point out one thing that may bother you from going to downtown Disney, the parking problem. That's gone. 
go on the parking i love the parking garages not only are they super easy to get in and out of they tell you when you go in how many spots are available on each level so there is no driving around and around until you find a spot and then once you're on the level it will tell <clears throat> it will tell you how many spots are open in each row little green and red light on the roof so you know exactly where to go uh, and then from there, it's just uh, one or two uh, walks downstairs or escalators <laughs> to the bridge that takes you right into Disney Springs and then either uh, over by the Coca-Cola store and where the AMC movie theater and Planet Hollywood are or all the way at the other end, very close to where Legoland is. And I have to say, at one point when we first went over there yesterday or the day before, I walked off of the escalator and I looked around to try and get my bearings because again, we were just here at Christmas. I did not know where I was, absolutely had no clue where I was. And I happened to look down to the right and there was the world of Disney. For this to be so dramatically different in a matter of eight months, just, it boggles the mind. Well, yeah, not only December, but you were here for a cruise Mother's Day weekend. I was. I didn't go to, to Disney Springs, though, but it's, it's totally different. Well, I drove by it and saw it. It's totally just, different. Yeah, and it, like even the parking garage thing. It took a while for the parking garages to get complete. All that's done, it's just a seamless experience. Getting in and out is, is a joy. Uh, if you're somebody who comes here regularly and you're used to the, you know, the difficulties of finding a parking spot or parking all the way out at Cirque du Soleil, I, I mean, that's just gone. There's also a valet for somebody that does not want to park in the parking garage. Yep. So the whole end where you used to have to fight for a parking space is now valet spots. Yeah, down by where Santa Claus would be or the Disney toy store or the Christmas yeah. experience. Thing. And you're way off track. Yeah. You're way off topic. But we definitely would recommend Chef Art Smith's oh, Homecoming Florida Kitchen. Um, it was a really good meal. It was something different. Something One to five. How much was the price? We, okay, so we spent $140 on five appetizers and two entrees. Mm -hmm. And dessert. And one dessert. Plus the drinks. Plus the drinks. And then because he did spill a drink that went all over everything, we ended up giving an extra $10. Yeah, the waiter put a drink down and it put it in my blind spot, which is right in front of me. He didn't know, but even the guy that came over to help do the cleanup work, the busboy, was very friendly, very uh, cooperative. He, he was awesome. So he got tipped a little on the side. Everybody was awesome. It, I mean, this, the the waiter was very helpful. He he gave us some opinions in terms of what his favorites, and he didn't have any not favorites, just things he Well, he didn't have a ba banana allergy, so even he was aware of dealing with an allergy and stuff. Yeah. Very friendly, very accommodating. Yeah, he was very nice, but then when we spilled that soda and that, that kid came over... Yeah. I mean, he was mopping the floors around us. He was wiping down all the chairs. He ended up switching out the chair. They were very, very gracious in helping us get everything. And then you back. ran into... Deb Wills, who I love. I just love her. Now, she's been there, what, four or five times? T tonight was her third visit there. So she was definitely checking out some of the yep. other menu options. And she would said every meal, she, every item she's had there was wonderful. I would say... Of One to all, five Mickey bars. One, I would say four and a half. Okay. Is this better than the boathouse or equal? You. This is a totally different experience than the boathouse. Uh, and I wish we had time to go to the new STK in downtown Disney because then I would have had a steakhouse to kind of compare to a sort of steakhouse. But I would definitely eat at homecoming before I ate again at the boathouse. But I think in the grand scheme of things, of all the restaurants that we've tried in Disney Springs, I would go back to Morimoto first. Wow. I really, really enjoy Morimoto. Okay. So that's it from us. That is our homecoming review. Chef Art Smith's homecoming recently opened at Disney Springs. It is a, it's a must try. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll see you real soon.